so uh, my name is Mickey Gamino. This is the ABCI Book Club, and today we are discussing The Direct Mail Revolution by Robert W. Bly. Um, as the title uh, says, this is all about direct mail, how to make direct mail profitable and how to use uh, snail mail um, in today's today's market. So um, we're just going to open the page. snail. <laughs> <laughs> the direct mail revolution which is kind of you know an interesting title you know a revolutionary about direct mail but we'll get into it so um my name is michael gaminal i am the ceo and founder of gaminal tutors right now we are doing asvab domination so if you or anyone you know is going into the united states military they need to get into my asvab domination program um, to make sure that they're getting all of the best study resources and asking all the right questions of their recruiter. So um, go ahead, look me up, Gammon All Tutors, TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, all over the place. Wow. Yeah, we'll have to talk about TikTok sometime because I think that's a, a cool thing. Yeah, I'd love to. I'd love to. Cool. Um, Paula uh, Williams? Go ahead. Oh, go ahead. Yes, you know, tell you. Okay, Paula Williams, ABCI. Um, we do uh, marketing for aviation companies, and uh, we do done for you workshops on various topics, starting with social media um, is our first topic for our done for you workshops. Uh, so, uh, we will have to do one on direct mail sometime next year. That will be a good time. John Williams, and I uh, do a lot of the back end stuff for ABCI, as well as the occasional business consulting. Right. Cool. Cool. Well, good warm up. We'll just go over. We'll talk about um, basically what we thought of the book. I mean, personally, I thought it was a little dry. I, I don't know if I'm, I mean, I'm not that interested in snail mail personally because I am into things like TikTok, right? Like I was able, I, I've got so many subscribers, but at the same time, you know, the thing about something that gives you a large audience quickly for free um, you probably don't have very good attention from that audience. Like you may have an audience, but you're not, they're not captivated, right? They're not necessarily as good as what direct mail could be. So from what I understand from the book, like the benefit of direct mail is that it's a little bit more of an intimate channel of media to, to get people's attention. Um, because you're right, you know, you're using the written word to communicate directly with them rather than fancy dances and songs and like so much of that fluff that's that's really popular right now so there is something to be said for a little more um substance that i think can come from direct mail um but in reading this book um i mean there it's definitely the book to use if you are doing a direct mail campaign i mean it, it covers all of the bases um, you know, how your, your flyers should look or how your, you know, sales letter should look. There's a chapter on just about every type of mail letter that you could, that you could create. So, um, overall I'd give it, you know, four stars for technical use, but probably two stars for, you know, excitement. Direct mail. Um, but if somebody has had a great deal of success from direct mail, I'm sure this kind of book would, you know be the exact thing that they'd look for. Right. Absolutely. Um, Dave um, Pearl and I, and maybe some other folks in our group have taken classes from Bob Bly. And he is a interesting dude. He is really a hermit. He does not travel to conferences or anything else. Um, he always does, you know, before it was cool, he was doing Zoom, you know, into... <laughs> You know, we'd have a big conference that everybody had paid thousands of dollars to come to, and all of the rest of the speakers are live, but everybody flocks to the Bob Bly um, workshops because he knows his stuff, and he would never show up in person. He'd just be this face on the screen um, because he doesn't travel. So he's kind of like total opposite of the aviation industry, you know, because we love people who need to be there in person. That's kind of what the whole industry is about. Um, but uh, he does know his stuff, and he is not the most riveting um, 
<laughs> speaker. <laughs> and that's okay. I mean, he actually is more entertaining in person because he has the self-deprecating humor that doesn't come across in print at all, which is interesting because he's a great, um, you know, the, uh, the, the things that he writes, the campaigns that he writes always gets, get fantastic results, even though they're boring. So he kind of breaks that rule about marketing, you know, that the primary sin of, uh, of marketing is to be boring. And I think that's partly because of, it's kind of the anti-TikTok, you know, it's the anti, um, be there in person, have a screening uh, revival in your workshop, um, you know, with everybody getting up and waving their hands and stuff like that. He's the opposite of all that. Yeah. Um, so this so, is like yeah. the equal and opposite reaction to, to mm-hmm. the state being raised on the other side right like the more and more you know bells and whistles and elephants riding unicycles we have the more we kind of crave something that's a little more just strictly based in logic a little more sensical right exactly and he kind of makes fun of the elephants on unicycles and and things like that um so it is really effective um, when he does writing for campaigns and things like that, but it didn't really come across in this book, I don't think. So it was not entirely successful in his... Uh, so that's, you know, a fair point about about that. But anyway, cool. cool. What did what'd you, you think? think of it, John? Oh, well, I've uh, actually learned a few things that I didn't know about direct mail. Uh, one is, I'd always thought this, but there's actually done a study that uh, shows that when you read something in paper, it uh, simulates a part of the brain that reading it on a screen doesn't. And so you actually makes more sense to do this. Mm-hmm. And then, uh, of course, 80% of consumers, get, at least 80%, give a quick read to the direct mail to get in their mailbox even if they throw it out. Mm-hmm. So that's not necessarily the same with TikTok and Facebook. But at least they look at it, and heck, sometimes that's all you need if you've done it right. Mm-hmm. And then, uh, then he gives a list of reasons that he won't do anything but direct mail, mm-hmm. and because uh, it can reach prospects that online marketing sometimes can't. It's response driven, pays for itself. And you can measure it scientifically and precisely. It stands out. It can be tested. He rolled out with confidence, and it is selective. So he put all that together. I mean, you're kind of crazy not to do it. Right. Back up to the part where you said it pays for itself. I think one of the biggest objections people have to direct mail is that we have all of these free ways of marketing our stuff. Why would I pay money for printing and postage when I could just take the same thing and stick it on Facebook for free? Well, let me quote him precisely. Okay. (laughs) I happen to have it right here. That's right. Because it's on paper. (laughs) Talking about lead generation B2B direct mail, where the size of individual orders is larger than in consumer mail order. A single sale can sometimes cover the cost of the entire mailing. For instance, a mailer I wrote to promote an MRI machine only sold one unit. The product cost was 700000 and the entire cost of mailing to 2,000 prospects was less than 5000 giving the manufacturer an ROI of 140 to 1. Yeah. Okay. Uh, it says a package that is profitable, that is one that generates a dollar fifty to two dollars or more in revenue for every dollar spent, is literally a money generating machine. You simply keep mailing to more names on more lists and keep collecting the money until sales fall off and the piece stops to being profitable. Right. Huh. Exactly. But that depends on many things. He's got a neat little diagram where he talks about, let me find it really quickly. Um, you know, the things that are important in a direct mail campaign, you know, the things that are critical for success. It's a pie chart and it's really cool. Um, As like 40% of the success of your direct mail has to do with the quality of your list. Uh, And then something like 20 something percent has to do with the offer. You know, how good is your offer for that list? And he talked about renting lists all over the place. Yeah. And, and then why the, you would do that and how you would use those lists then 
to generate your house list. Right. So, you know. And in aviation, we've got the benefit of having captive audiences because everybody has to have FAA ratings or licenses or registrations for their aircraft and all of that's public information. So. There are more than 60,000 postal mailing lists commercially available for rent. Mm -hmm. 60,000. Mm -hmm. That's a lot. Mm -hmm. I remember reading about that from Dan Kennedy too. I know yeah. that he, he talks about how you can rent lists all the time. And it always seems like this weird dark web thing. Like I never understand how, how do you get, you know, a list of a hundred people who are your ideal prospect? Like mm -hmm. do you guys, do you guys know a little bit more behind that? Yeah, there are list brokers and there's some of them listed in the book and I'm going to share some links to, to some of them that are kind of general. And then there are some that are more aviation specific. Um, okay. If you are one of our customers and it's an aviation list, then we'll get it for you. Um, if you are in a different field, like, you know, Mickey, for you, probably what you would do is um, go to Info USA or one of the list brokers and talk with, and, you know, unfortunately, you're going to have to talk with a salesperson <laughs> because <laughs> there are so many um parameters that you're probably going to want you know you're going to want people who are likely to be interested in the military who have expressed interest in the military who um like 511 or who like certain tv shows or whatever you know and you can talk with this um broker about what are the options to get a list of um you know a thousand people in the united states that are you know um, your perfect prospects and you'd have to figure out what that is. And before you make that call, you know, I would put together, if you could do anything, what would you want those people to be? You know, would you want them to be grandparents of, you know, people who are going into the, you know, I mean, there's a lot that you could do with that. And the more specific your requirements are, the more likely you are to get exactly what you want. Um, some things they can't do, but a lot of things that are kind of surprising, they actually can, especially now. Yep. Because they're using data from um, big data, you know, um, from Facebook, from uh, Gartner Group, from other places where they're um, collecting data from the media and from other sources and uh, collating that against the factors that you want. Gotcha. So, cool. you know, subscribers to a certain magazine, watchers of a certain program, age, income, all that stuff can be collated into a list. That's so cool. He also gives us yeah. an example of cost mm -hmm. where it says, you just count the orders or inquiries that come in from mailing, you know what it was profitable. For example, say you send direct mail pieces to 2,000 prospects, your cost including postage, rent, and mail lists and printing is 70 cents per package for a total of 1,400. The mailing generates 40 leads, therefore your cost per lead is $35, your response rate is 2%. With follow-up, you persuade eight of these prospects to buy. Your conversion rate is eight out of 40 or 20%. Your cost per sale is $175. Right. Well, the product sells for 1000 per unit. You're good. You know, if it's less than that, then that's something different. Right. <laughs> it's not as good. It's not as profitable anyway. Right. But the And that's kind of the beauty of direct mail, right? Like, even if it's not profitable right away, it's very possible that your letter is sitting on somebody's desk somewhere mm -hmm. and could be profitable months from now. Right. Right. Or your postcard is, and this has happened to us before, our, your postcard is sitting on somebody's um, whiteboard. You know, they've stuck it there with a magnet until they're ready to do whatever. And then they call you two years later and say, you know, that offer you had about, you know, this in October of 2017, you know, are you still doing that? And the answer is no, but let's see what we can do for you. You know? Um, so there are a lot of people that keep those things. I guess another point that he makes that is you don't want to blow your whole budget on a direct mail campaign because, you know, if you rent the list and then you do an expensive mailing, um, it takes, you know, all of the things that we've talked about, you know, where it takes three, five, seven, nine, twenty contacts with that person in order to make the sale. So the first postcard 
is kind of a throwaway. The second postcard is not quite a throwaway. <laughs> you know, the third <laughs> postcard is where you start to make um, sales, at least in our our experience. Yeah. Um, to the same list. So, you know, if you buy a list, you want to use it for six months or a year uh, before you give up on it. And, you know, with four or six mailings at least. So if you're planning on something like that, you want to plan that into the budget and say, you know what, let's do, um, let's buy a list. And if we're going to invest in the list, then we want to get the most out of that, um, out of that list. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. No, it makes a lot of sense. It's just, it's, it's pretty impressive how much goes into a mailing campaign. Yeah. Um, And the fact that you have to be, like it's not something for a program that you're running for a month. I mean, on the one hand, you want a good offer that generates motivation, but on the other hand, it's not something that you're going to send it out today and get, you know, you know, a thousand inquiries tomorrow. Right. Yeah. I mean, there's short horizon marketing tactics and there's long horizon marketing tactics. This one is a long horizon, you know, like SEO is way out there, you know, um, stuff that you do for SEO, you will see results from that not sooner than 90 days from now, most likely. Um, wow. You know, there are people who will tell you um, different, but, you know, that's that's kind of our experience is that you see the maximum benefit at about 90 days. For direct mail, it's even longer than that, so. Yeah. <clears throat> but uh, back to your cost thing, yeah. you can do it on a shoestring budget. Mm-hmm. He says, and we know this, you can write, design, and print that simple yet effective mailing can produce on a small budget. Mailings can be complex packages with inserts, color brochures, pop-ups, other elaborate gimmicks, or you can send something much less expensive, a one-page letter and envelope, or even a simple three by five postcard. Right. Right. Well, and you know, I'm not trying to sell direct mail as a panacea to anything, you know, because I think you have to have a combination for it to be effective. Direct mail is like your second step. So you know, you get a customer's attention with TikTok and then uh, get them to give you their information. Then you send them a postcard. And uh, what that does is it kind of takes you off the web and you become uh, real, you know, because you're tangible. You're something that they're holding in their hands that they can show their parents or they show their their recruiters and other people. And uh, Mm -hmm. it adds a lot of credibility at a time when everything on the web is so suspicious. Absolutely, yeah. But he also said it's got um, drawbacks, and he lists them. Uh-huh. Uh, says they, uh, when you try and generate leads for expensive products, the sales potential is usually large enough that a few sales will pay back the cost. But direct mail use to sell low-priced consumer products via direct orders always has a slim profit margin. A slight shift in response or cost per thousand can quickly transform a losing package into winner, or vice versa. Yeah. And then he goes into increasing postage rates, which we know about, production costs, which we know about, no hypnos factor. <laughs> it's just not hip. So, you know, Bob, you get, Bly is, Bob Bly is anti-hip. <laughs> it's, like, it's like in banking, you know, you, you, they have, what is it, uh, KYC, know your client, or your customer? You mm-hmm. got to know your customer. Yeah. And, what, uh, and uh, the most common mistake keeps businesses is that it's one flop and done mindset. Yeah. Yeah, you're going to have to say that again, Tom. <laughs> That's an edit common, point. The most common mistake that keeps businesses from increased sales and profits through direct mail is the belief that if they tried direct mail once it didn't work, that means it will never work for them. Mm-hmm. And we have had campaigns that didn't work at all, and then the next time we get four or five, and time after that, a few, it just comes and goes. Mm-hmm. Well, that's and that's the kicker. I feel like that's something we bring up time and time again in this book club is that you always like everything is telling you it's not really selling a magic bullet, right? Like no. we always want it. We're always in the search of that like perfect sales letter that's just going to have people throwing their credit cards at you, but that it doesn't. It never seems to be the case, right? It's always a long game. It's a marathon. Yeah. But then they, yeah, but then he gives you the 10 fundamental principles of how to do it. You know, 
direct right and direct mail style, style, put response first. Don't allow branding guidelines to interfere with performance. Yeah. The offer is prominent and emphasized. For each specialist, kind of offers and guarantees are included. Calls to action are repeated and prominent. Target direct response buyers <clears throat> have a back end. Sales of additional products to customers who bought a first product. Be a tight lot. Direct marketing is unlike <clears throat> Madison Avenue. Are careful not to overspend. Yeah. Everything. Right. <clears throat> Well, and I think this falls into the category of, um, you know, everything for aviation is long cycle marketing, uh, which may or may not fit, you know, your business model if you're in some other category, you know, but if you're in it for the long haul and if you're after, um, you know, rela long term relationships, then it will absolutely work. If you are selling a consumer product like, um, music downloads or something like that, then, you know, it may not be the best venue, you know, then you're going to be a lot better off with TikTok. So, um, yeah. And even though you're, you, what you said about TikTok and not having that many people that are serious, but all it takes is one. Right. And you get people it, didn't, it didn't cost you anything to do that or very little. Yeah. And if you get one serious okay. inquiry that buys into it, then you've got your ROI. Yeah, TikTok, funny enough, TikTok actually has a special going on right now where they're, if you open a business account, they give you a $300 ad credit and then they're going to match your whatever you pay for ads up to the first 2000 But I can't say whether or not that's beneficial yet. Honestly, I've just been doing an organic TikTok account. So I've just been yeah. playing for free. And I'm already, I've gotten quite a few text messages. I've gotten pretty lucky. So... Um, and it's because people spend hours and hours just scrolling through. So it is uh, pretty sweet. It's pretty, it's pretty cool, but it's not, I mean, I can definitely see a benefit to, to mail as well. Right. Sure. No, I think your, um, your TikTok is, is actually brilliant because I'm seeing people um, attracted to that, that, you know, see somebody solving a problem and going, that's exactly what I need to do. And then they contact you immediately by text. And it's just so easy to do um, that you're getting um, that first contact with people. So I'm thinking in the case of, of your business and probably a lot of others, if you use one thing to get people's attention and maybe get them to raise their hand and then use direct mail further into the um, sales process where you're saying, you know, here's the details of our programs. Um, it's easier for them to read on, on paper, you know, maybe, and it's easier for them to share with their parents or their recruiters and say, you know, check this guy out. What do you, do you think this is legit? It's a whole lot easier to do that than to hand them your phone and say, look at this TikTok. Do you think this guy's legit? Um, <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. It'll it's a different legitimacy. part of the sales process. Right. For sure. For sure. It's a front end marketing. Absolutely. I think you're right. And I think, I think you're right in saying that mail should be the second step. I think you should only send mail to people that raise their hands. I think that's a pretty good point. Shooting yeah. mail out to cold clients is, uh, I mean, it's just scary. It would be scary for me anyway. Right. Well, and then you never have to buy a list. So, you know, as an example, um, our clients use a thing called lead feeder on their website. And this is one of the campaigns we have a, an article about. Um, when somebody visits your website, you can do a little bit of um, sleuthing to find out who that person likely is. So, you know, somebody comes to our website, it's likely a sales manager or a marketing manager or something along those lines or a C-suite person. So then what we do is we send postcards to all of those people saying, you know, um, fill out our survey or answer a, um, a quick question for us or, um, you know, we'd be happy to send you a free copy of our, um, our book or information package or something along those lines. They don't know that we know that they came to our website, you know? Right. But they're thinking like, wow, these guys, they're everywhere. Right, exactly. So, you know, we know that these are people that we want to work with because, you know, they're on our top 10 list or they're people that have we've checked out. And so we know it's worth the postage. So we've got a little stack of, of blue folders in the other room that we can just stick in a folder and put a stamp on and send out when they visit our website. And it looks like magic and it's high tech, but it's also very low tech, right? Mm -hmm. 
gives you a ton of legitimacy, right? Like they look at this website and they think to themselves, wow, these websites are getting out of control. They're so clean and smooth. But then when you send them an actual folder full of stuff, they're going to, that's where they really think like, dang, that, that place must have like a multi-million dollar office or, you know, something, you know, they, right. little do they know <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> on the kitchen table, you know, it's, uh, but you know, anybody can do that fairly low budget right now. Um, yeah. and look really big and, you know, look very together. Um, you know, you can just get some, um, generic things printed and then maybe make something really small that has your expirable offer, you know, so you have a, a course catalog and maybe a background piece and about Mickey Gaminol and about um, Gaminol tutors and, you know, put all that together into a nice little package and then just put a little postcard that you can just print off on your printer and say, for the next 30 days, you can get um, into our December program um, for, you know, with this promo code or something along those lines. So then you have all the elements of direct mail without the expense of a list, you know, renting a list and um, having a lot of crazy stuff printed and things like that. Very cool. Yeah. Very, very cool. All right. Well, we're, we're going to be wrapping up here in a little bit, but the last thing I want to ask about yeah. is this, this graphic I thought was really cool where it says pick any two. Um, oh, so cool. I don't know if it's left to right or right to left for you guys, but it shows um, you can either pick quick, um, top tier, or cheap, right? So, <laughs> yep. Speed, quality, or um, price. Right. And you can only do two. So are you guys familiar with that? You guys oh, yeah. We talk about that in our sales courses all the time. If somebody's being unreasonable, then you have to refer them back to the triangle and say, pick any two. <laughs> <laughs> that's cool that's cool so that's what so you use it as a tactic when you're selling you use right. that to say you can pick two of these three exactly so if somebody's beating you up on the price you can say okay let's see what we can do to make you a smaller product you know or um to meet your needs with something that is not as expensive um you know so you can always negotiate um a sale based on those three factors nice yeah no, but can't you can't <laughs> Sorry. What is it? You can't have it all. No. Oh, that's great. Right. Cool. No, that's well, a any, great time. Do you guys have any final points? Anything that you wanted to, to say about the book? I would say, you know, just like any tool, if you have a Phillips head screwdriver, uh, it's good for certain things and not others. So, you know, um, direct mail is a Phillips head screwdriver and it's great when you have a the right case for it but we see a lot of people throwing out postcards um especially in this industry to everybody and being discouraged because it didn't work and um, giving up on direct mail so it is not a panacea but it also is not ineffective so um, i think people get the wrong idea about it what does panacea mean that's uh panacea. answered everything um, a miracle drug that cures everything, you know, the snake oil of, uh, <laughs> not the magic button. We're, we're covering suffixes and prefixes in my class right now. So I'm like, oh, pen fun. means everything, asia means in relation to, and I'm like trying to break it down for that. <laughs> I see. Okay. Uh, yeah. It cures everything. Gotcha. Right. Cool. Good I love it. Cool. Good word. <laughs> Yeah, so I'm telling my kids, I'm like, you guys got to start using these words. So it'll lock it in, you know. They're going to start to write speaking Latin. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Um, cool. Well, should we, should, it, it, does anybody have anything else to say or should we uh, wrap it? Oh, we should wrap it. Yeah. All right. Uh, so my name is Michael Gaminol, ASVAB Domination with Gaminol Tutors. You can find me on TikTok. Uh, maybe one day soon I'll come to a mailbox near you. We'll see what happens. Cool. Paula Williams, ABCI. Uh, we help aviation companies sell more of their products and services using whatever tool is best for the job. That's the marketing piece. I do the uh, business consulting piece if and when it happens. We just started getting questions from time to time, so I feel those. Right. Exactly. If they need marketing, they come to me. If they need anything else, they go to John. <laughs> awesome.
Awesome. Cool. Cool.